Yay, we're live. <laughs> Yay. Hi, everyone. Connie, I, I had a little snippet of a video that I posted this morning on the group. So to remind everyone to jump in and that you are going to come on live and mm -hmm. share your expertise around home staging. So um, mm -hmm. everyone's excited to jump in. Once in a while, Yay. you'll see people pop up when they say hello. So anybody out there that wants to say hello, jump in and let us know you're out there. We'd like to see where people are coming in from. This is our first Money Monday. You're launching it, Connie. Uh, with wow, the 50, exciting. With the 50, yeah, with a 50 plus and fabulous group. And believe me, they are fabulous. Very engaging group. And mm -hmm. um, we're every Monday at 1.30 Central, we'll be presenting one of our experts to have them present some information that's on a financial topic like yours today, how to mm -hmm. stage your house so that you can get it sold and get the best price and what are some tips and tricks. The funniest thing I was thinking about mm -hmm. this, Connie, is don't people say once you stage it, gosh, maybe I won't sell it now. <laughs> Right? Almost every time, exactly. Almost every time, they're like, "Wow, gosh, if I would have thought about arranging the furniture, that would maybe I'll maybe I'll just stay now." <laughs> I know, I know. It's so amazing, even yeah. if you're not selling your house, it'd be fun just to see how to stage your mm -hmm. house, or some some ways, some tips to pick up for Definitely. staging your own house if you want to stay. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, thought it would be great. Got some different people jumping on here. So um, we'll give it about one more minute or so, and then we can get started. Um, yeah, yeah, we're excited to do these Money Mondays. And I know, you, Connie, you were saying that the housing market is going crazy. So, um, I mean, that's exciting really right now. Is. So it's the time to sell. Um, we learned that the other week from one of our realtors that COVID has really helped the house sales. Definitely, yeah. yeah. Yeah, which is yeah. I was going to so, say so that we just have a shortage of homes to sell. I mean, it's just they're they're selling just as fast as we can get them ready to go on the market. So it is definitely a, an opportunity to sell if you're looking to sell. Yeah, amazing, perfect. Do you especially find for those. Home? I was just going to say, especially for those people that may have been putting it off and putting it off, and if there's really no reason to put it off and the market is hot, why not? stage your house All and right. get it sold right yeah mm -hmm. exactly where it's just an op it's a great opportunity right now so it is mm -hmm. yeah people have been putting off or the pandemic kind of caused them some pause it's definitely um a time to take advantage with the interest rates being at historic lows yeah um, it is definitely time and the shortage of houses i mean you're going to get you know the maximum return possible right now so Wonderful. definitely a good opportunity mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. So should I go ahead and up from Minneapolis? Hi, Kim. Should I go ahead and introduce Purse Strings and we'll get started? Yeah, that sounds great. Okay, good. So welcome everybody to our first Money Monday in the 50 Plus and Fabulous group. We're so, so pleased to be here. Uh, we'll be presenting every Monday at 1.30, so put that on your calendar. And at Purse Strings, what we do is we provide free financial information, resources, experts like Connie uh, for women, because our goal is to make sure women have all the resources they need to make the best financial decisions for themselves and for their families, no matter if you're Maggie's age, you know, high potential earner coming out of college with some student loans, or my age where I'm transitioning, I've, I've been through divorce, now remarried, but transitioning towards retirement. So we cover the gambit. Um, and we would like everyone to spread the purse strings word that we're here for women. We're free. Uh, we're at PurseStrings.co. And we also have our own Facebook group, uh, Purse Strings for Financially Fearless Women. But today, I'm going to pass it over to Maggie so she can introduce our speaker. All righty. So today we have Connie Barhorst. Um, she's a realtor. Um, in a Chicago suburb. She has very high standards of service and loves to give uh, that experience to her clients. She has a strong background in sales and marketing, particularly in social media marketing. She loves to showcase properties with assistance of video, live posts, and other social media outlets. Most homes are sold via the internet today, and yeah. she ensures that the picture and the images we present are perfect. Her love and passion for helping people pairs well with her interest in home design, decor, and furnishing. Helping a client get their home ready to present to the market or um, helping a friend find the perfect fit is what she truly enjoys. 
So Connie, I'll give it the floor to you. Thank you. you Thank you, Maggie. Thank you, Barb. So nice to be here today. Thank you for having me. Uh, truly a pleasure. Um, I'll introduce myself. I'm Connie Barhorst. I'm with Baird and Warner a real estate out of Libertyville, Illinois. I live in Grays Lake, Illinois with my husband and our four children, um, two golden retrievers. Um, we live um, in Grays Lake in a community called Prairie Crossing, which is a conservation community that um, hold near and dear to my heart. We've lived here for 20 years, um, raising our family in this uh, unique uh, community. Um, so that's a little bit about me. Um, I am a, a real estate broker. Um, I do, I, I help people buy homes and I, I help people sell homes a lot. Um, and that's what I've been focusing on in my area of specialty, uh, specialty is the home staging, which is a very, very important piece to getting your home um, market ready, as we say. Um, you wanna present the best possible image um, when, when you're getting ready to um, put your home on the market. Um, we are in what we would call a true seller's market, meaning that there are not enough homes on the market right now to meet the demand. So if you're thinking about selling your home, this is actually an opportune time to do so uh, because the inventory is low, but the demand is very high. There are a lot of buyers um, in the market and the homes, um, like I said, there's just not that many of them for sale and they're going very quickly. But I might add, you want to make sure that you're presenting the best possible product um, when you're getting your home ready to go on the market. Especially, you know, if you're you're looking to get a certain asking price um, or above, there's multiple offers. That's a that's a huge uh, thing right now. But you want to be able to present your home in such a way that um, it matches what you're what you're asking. So I'm gonna go through a little bit about my process when I when I meet with a client and I go to their home and we're starting this uh, process of, of staging of staging their home and getting ready for it to go on the market. So please, at any any time, any questions, please please jump in and ask questions. We can do it through the presentation or we can do it afterwards, whatever whatever you prefer. But when I meet with a client, I go over to their home and I do a complete walkthrough of their of their home and we go room by room and I, I uh, make suggestions on, on things that I would suggest that changes that they make, updates. Um, not a lot of money has to be spent in this process. I have a lot of creative ways to working with uh, each person's budget um, and you know whatever constraints they have in trying to um, you know meet this goal of uh, getting presenting you know the house the way we want to. Um, and as I as Maggie had mentioned when she introduced me, most homes are sold via the internet, especially in this uh, pandemic time. Um, we've been doing live uh, virtual tours, uh, Facebook events such as this, touring homes. Um, you know, the homes are on the, the MLS, the multiple listing service. So the pictures that we take once the home is staged and ready to go in the market are of utmost importance because that is how the home is most likely going to sell. That's what's going to get the attention. People are flipping through pictures on the internet of different homes and you want your home to stand out and the pictures make all the difference. So everything I do is focused around getting perfect pictures. When it comes to picture day, I bring in a professional photographer um, that shoots the pictures for me um, and, um, you know, work with her to get all the best angles and all the best lighting. So first of all, when I go through um, and I go through a home, um, the first steps are going to be, you know, decluttering. Oftentimes, you know, things have accumulated over the years and a good decluttering and kind of purging and, uh, you know, going through room by room and deciding what needs to be kept and what needs to go. Oftentimes there is unnecessary, unnecessary furniture in a room. A lot of times there are um, just extra pieces um, and we just, can use those in other rooms or you know they can go into storage. A storage unit is an excellent idea when, when you're getting ready to put your home on the market. Um, it's a good place to go with extra stuff um, should that be needed. Um, so 
Uh, also a deep cleaning, uh, very important. This is the time to make sure the windows are washed um, inside your window sills, um, you know, deep clean the tile and all, all those kind of things that sometimes we like to forget about a little bit. Um, you know, just go through cabinets, people will open doors, they will look in closets. Um, my tip about closets is um, really, especially clothes uh, closets, is remove half of your clothes. It will make the closet look much bigger. You're, you're packing up and getting ready to move anyway. So go ahead and pack up the stuff that you're not wearing right now, and it will just make your, your closet appear that much bigger. So um, also things when we uh, are starting to the staging process is removing some of the uh, personal items. And a lot of times people ask, well, why do I have to get rid of all my personal photos and, and mementos? But the way I try to explain it to people is, is we're trying to get people to envision themselves here in their home. We're trying to take your personality out of it and we're trying to allow them to see themselves uh, making that their home. So if the family pictures are all over the walls, it is a little bit distracting in them trying to picture themselves there. So that's really kind of the, the reason why a lot of times real estate agents say, remove the pictures. It's just trying to actually, I try to also say, it's making it look more like a model home, like envision, you know, the pictures that you, uh, you know, look at if you saw a magazine or a brochure for a, a home builder or something. It's, it's presenting something that looks almost like as if it's out of a magazine. No, you probably wouldn't live that way, but this isn't decorating around necessarily how you would live. It's presenting um, a warm, inviting um, picture for people who are looking to purchase your home. And that, that's the goal, is to envision you know, somebody to picture themselves there. Um, and then, uh, yeah, back to the closets a little bit. I just, you know, taking things off the shelves, linen closets, pantries, anywhere where you could use like baskets to organize and just, you know, create um, a lot less clutter um, and just organization. So as I mentioned, people will look in the closets, they will be taking a peek everywhere. So I always say, well, you're getting ready to pack up. So we may as well just start the process now um, because it's less to deal with shortly in a few you know, days or weeks when we sell. Um, a lot of times, um, all the items that you would need to stage your home are actually right in your own home. I like to shop from room to room and pick things, uh, rearrange. Um, I might find a table in, in one room, a table and chairs, and use that by the fireplace to create a setting. Um, so it's important to, um, you know, sometimes I go down in people's storage rooms and like, oh, we have all this art. And I'm like, oh, perfect. We're going to use that above the fireplace. But, you know, oftentimes I will um, find things right in the home. I do personally have uh, a, my own staging uh, stock um, that I use. I bring in accessories for my clients and that sort of thing. But oftentimes we can make work what people have in their home with just a few um, simple, simple additions. Um, so it's fun to kind of take uh, people's things and think about different ways they can work and, and, and just even rearranging the furniture or putting something in an angle. People are always amazed about how just looking at something in a different light, um, an arrangement, how it can look like almost like you have new furniture. They would have never thought of doing that. So it's important, I think, just to kind of take what you have there and uh, make it work. I see a, a couple of pictures coming on and we can certainly go through a couple of those. This is a before picture of one of my clients' homes recently. And I haven't gotten into this part yet in the presentation, but paint is exactly the easiest, uh, most cost-effective um, you know, update that we can make. So I'm just gonna point out in this room, um, there was a mural on the right wall, the kitchen was yellow. Uh, this dining room was yellow. If you see beyond, it was had more shades of blue. Um, and if you want to go to the next slide, Maggie, you'll see the after. So we took, we, we use paint a lot. So we went and we have the same uh, tone of paint. You can't really even tell in this picture because of the lighting, but the, we went with the same color throughout the entire first floor. 
which um, provides a lot of uh, flow and actually makes everything look how much bigger everything looks when we when we got first of all we took away the mural and then we put everything into the same um, paint color um, so that I was really happy the way that turned out and her beautiful blue cabinets worked beautifully um, so you know we didn't have to make a lot of changes we just simplified with the single paint color throughout the home and remove the mural um, you know just to create a, a clean a clean palette um, so that's yeah we could go on to the next one we could do one more um, this is actually a teen bedroom a teenager's bedroom so there was a, a few wall hangings and um, if you go to the next slide, you'll see that we really did not make hardly any changes to this room, but it looks like a totally different room. That's the same exact paint color. I removed the two wall hangings, just rearranged the pillows on the floor, made a big comfy kind of beanbag style um, area. I put a, a contrasting rug by the bed. Um, and one of my favorite things to do, I love throw pillows on bed. So, uh, you know, put some colorful pillows, but the throw, a throw at the end of the bed, across the bed with tassels or a chunky knit or something that's gonna provide some texture is always really handy. That's a, um, an example of the, uh, you'll notice that the vanity, I, it was pushed up against the wall in this before picture. And then in the after picture, I just tilted it a little bit and I actually took a fuzzy rug and put it over the stool just to give it that, you know, boho kind of vibe. Um, and we actually did bring in another nightstand that I found in a different room because I'm like, oh, hey, that matches your, your vanity. So that was just a really simple fix, but just um, gave it a whole new life. Um, really happy with that as well, how that turned out. But it's just a good, example of how you don't have to spend a lot of money you can take things in your own home and uh, rearrange them to make it look um, as if you know you spent a lot of money or you bought new furniture um, as, as i was mentioning um, you can find a lot of uh, really nice um, home accessories it's always fun to update accessories a little bit um, some of my favorite places to find new accessories are even at secondhand shops. Um, thrifting, as my daughter likes to call it, is such a thing. So we go out and, you know, I find um, unique vases um, or things like that um, that can be used. Um, home goods is absolute one of my favorites, as well as Target. You don't have to spend a lot of money to get some really updated um you know pieces and accessories that are kind of on trend and, and really help add a little pop of excitement um, greenery is one of my big go-to's i use a lot of greenery in my staging um, most of it faux so i can use it um, you know from home to home but i also love to go to like trader joe's or someplace um, inexpensive and buy some fresh stems because there's nothing like fresh flowers in a kitchen or a bathroom um, just to, you know, or an entryway to bring um, a really nice welcome to a room. Um, it, as I mentioned before, throw pillows are huge and not a very expensive. Um, that is one of the first things I will do is to people's couches. Um, oftentimes they're the same, they've had the same throw pillows and that maybe even came with the couch. And so just updating the throw pillows um, and can, can lighten a room as well too. You could take a darker couch and add some lighter throw pillows and change, change the whole look of it. Um, again, I like to use uh, throws like blankets, um, afghans to add some texture with tassels or pom-poms or chunky knits. Those are always fun to drape over the back of a couch or across an ottoman. I love um, trays on ottomans and creating a little vignette, candle holders, uh, stacks of books, a little bit of greenery, um, just all about presenting that very welcoming kind of um, environment where you're like, oh, I want to sit down and enjoy the fireplace. Um, just uh, creating a conversation area. Uh, the way that you arrange the furniture can just be a huge um, addition. So a lot of times I look for the focal point in a room. So if it's the fireplace 
or if it's a beautiful picture window, or it's a, you know, like I said, a magnificent fireplace with a big mantle. It's nice to arrange the furniture in such a way that you're drawing attention to the focal point, what you want people to notice in a room. So oftentimes, you know, that's important to check out. Um, lighting and lamps, also very important to make sure that dark corners are lit. Um, tall lamps are good for that sort of thing. Table lamps are great. Always make sure that your light bulbs are uh, matching and functioning. Those are very important. One of uh, another inexpensive way uh, to imp update a room would be to change out light fixtures. I'm a huge proponent of new light fixtures. There's many different places from Wayfair to all sorts of other different sources online. Um, even the big like Home Depot and Menards, you would be surprised at the kind of light fixtures that that you can find and what a what a difference in a room an updated light fixture makes. That's one of my favorite um, changes. Um, I always talk about removing, you know, a lot of times people have collections, which are wonderful, but like spoon collections or vases or something, and it might be time to pack up some of those kind of things, um, really personal kind of items or, you know, just lots of little knickknacks. So that whole simplifying process, um, you know, sometimes that takes a little bit of time as you're getting ready to put your house on the market. But those are things that I would um, that I would focus on. Um, rugs, rugs are important and another uh, really great way to add some color or interest to a room and also a great way to group furniture. Um, to to place it on the rug with your your coffee table or your ottoman and your chairs, um, you know, just that whole arranging and making a room look inviting. Um, and as I mentioned before, not too much furniture. A lot of times, I will have clients remove furniture if it's time to sell it or consign it or put it in the basement if it's going to the next home. But oftentimes, the room will appear so much bigger if we can go ahead and remove sometimes half of the furniture in a room. I'm gonna move on to um, bathrooms and um, some bathroom updates that can be done that um, do not cost a lot of money is to take a look at the mirrors. Oftentimes, um, a lot of homes have um, the builder grade you know, big mirror that was, you know, put in everybody's home. Um, you can find great mirrors at Hobby Lobby, home, um, home Goods, Target. So lots of inexpensive mirror options that can really dress up um, a bathroom. Uh, paint and painting cabinets. I'm a big uh, lover of painting cabinets. It just gives a whole new facelift. You don't have to rip out the vanity. Um, you find a great painter and you can paint the cabinets and you can add hardware to your cabinets. And it's amazing what a, what a facelift you can get off of um, just doing those simple things um, in a bathroom. Again, light fixtures, um, and it almost looks like you have a brand new bath at that point because you know updating and uh, gutting a, a bathroom isn't something that you know everybody's up for or wants to do or or really, you know, should be doing when they're selling their home, but making some little small changes ab um, absolutely goes a long way. Um, bathrooms, I also love to bring out the big white fluffy towels, stacks of towels on little stools or by the tub or hanging. So I like to create a very spa-like um, bathroom, um, white fluffy rugs, just making it look luxurious, almost like you're stepping into a spa. So those are simple things um, that you can do in the bathroom. Um, same, a lot of that goes for the kitchen as well. Um, if you're just looking to give your kitchen a little update, I would definitely think about hardware on the cabinets um, and or painting the cabinets if that if that's an option. That can really give um, a new new life to your old cabinets. Is, to give them paint and some hardware. Um, it's a very popular um, update right now. Um, again, light fixtures, another way, and, and paint for sure would be things. Um, I think we might have a couple other picture or slides that I could go through. Okay, this is um, 
a bedroom, a master bedroom with one of my clients, uh, a lovely um, shade on the wall that we actually kept but you'll notice the dark bedspread and the dark window treatment really made the room look really quite dark. So you'll see in the next slide what I did. We removed the, uh, the heavy, heavy drapery, floral draperies, and we uh, removed the heavy matching bedspread. I love to do white fluffy duvet covers, um, especially in the master. I like it to look very plush and hotel-like. It's kind of always my goal. You'll notice lots of pillows, different textured pillows. And there is my uh, signature uh, I go to with the throw with some, some texture as well. Um, a pop of color, picking a color that kind of, I thought the bright yellow accented with the blue um, and looked just so sharp and crisp with against the white. Um, and, the, and look at the light just filtering in with the, with the big heavy draperies removed. So that was, that was a master that I worked on last year. Yep, that's the before. Um, and then also you can't totally tell in the after picture, but there are nightstands I added. Actually the nightstands were there, but I added matching lamps. So matching lamps on the nightstand is a really nice way to frame the bed. She already had artwork above the bed. We actually left that and uh, pulled it all together. Um, very simply and actually without the client buying anything. I, I travel with this, uh, with a fluffy white comforter. And so yeah, client did not even have to buy, make any purchases. And we had gorgeous pictures um, with, uh, with the items that I brought in. And um, let's see, this is a family room that I did last year. So in this family room, gorgeous hardwood floors, high ceilings um, and so when I came in and these windows um, they were they were partially closed when I first saw them the first time but you'll go into the next slide and you'll see what we did is we went with the neutral paints throughout the whole first floor we went I, I can't remember the shade but there's so many um, commonly used shades um, that real estate uh, or stagers go to so we went for a whole entire first floor all the same color but you'll notice I brought in a rug we made a, a conversation area, as I was talking about before. We've got the sectional pulled. It was pushed back in the corner. We pulled it in a little bit on the rug, centered it with the, with the windows, um, added light over in the corner and the coffee table. And I was just really, really happy with the way that turned out as well. Beautiful room with the high ceilings and those windows. And just night and day going with the more neutral um, the neutral paint, it really is a very appealing factor when buyers come in to your home to see a fresh neutral slate. It just really helps them envision what's possible, what they want to do, um, and not be distracted by, by colors um, that could be, you know, might be a little bit dated or stronger than some people have a taste for. So just going neutral um, really, really has a lot of advantages. And then you're covering up any imperfections, you know, nicks, holes in the wall. It's just nice to start fresh um, when you're getting ready to sell. I'm not sure if there's any more slides. Oh, yes, this is a family room. So you'll notice right away in the forefront to the left, there is table. And when I talked about removing furniture, you'll see that there's a lot of furniture in this room. So we, it, and it's a smaller room. So I actually ended up removing half of this furniture. It was, there was a heavy piece above the fireplace. Um, so I suggested something light and bright. And um, it was, uh, you'll see in the next slide, we kept the same paint color. Client wanted to keep the same, we just moved the furniture around and we, re we re removed. Um, we removed most of it. We've got the nice bright colored, um, art above the fireplace. And we also have, um, the, you know, we made a little conversation area. So just simple changes. Nothing actually was bought for this home other than some a few things that I brought in to let the client use. But again, I shopped in her home, removed some items and just made a few, you know, key changes in artwork and placement. And it just makes the, the world of difference. So that might be it for the slides. Is that it for the slides, Maggie? 
Yes, it is. That's it's for the slides. Yeah, and so let's see. I was just going to talk about um, um, what else here? Um, bedrooms. Going back to the bed bedrooms a little bit. Um, I love if there is like an oversized chair or um, ottoman that we can create like a little reading nook. That's always nice, especially in a, in a master to be able to create a, a little space like that. And then I just wanted to kind of go into talking a little bit about um, not forgetting the outside of your home and your curb appeal. Very important, people will be driving by your home, people will be visiting your home, and that first impression is so important. Um, I love painting the front door, a fresh coat of paint on the front door, sometimes a pop of color. Don't forget your doormat, a fresh, clean, new doormat that is big enough for your door, not anything too small, but something that is scaled and actually sometimes a little bigger. It actually makes your door appear bigger if you have a bigger mat. Cleaning and sweeping your, your front porch or your walkway, getting down the cobwebs and the bird, bird nest. Um, you know, throw pillows on your outdoor furniture, um, especially with the pandemic. Buyers are so intrigued by outdoor living spaces, fire pits, porches, patios, anything like that, that you can accessorize and, and show how it's used um, with the throw pillows or little tables and create a little vignette with uh, um, you know, greenery or flowers that it just really, really goes a long way um, in people really like envisioning themselves um, you know, at your home. So those are um, oh, outdoor, outdoor light fixtures as well. Same thing that I talked about with inside. Please make sure that you have matching um, light bulbs that work in your outdoor fixtures um, and, you know, flower bed maintenance and all that sort of thing is important. So I would be happy to answer any questions. If there's any questions that anybody has or would like to um, have me answer. Awesome. That was a bunch of great information, Connie. So <laughs> we really appreciate that. Um, so many great ideas. Um, Kim is wondering, is it fair to ask the agent we end up working with to help us stage our home? Is it common that most agents bring in items like you mentioned? I think it's totally fair to ask. A lot of agents um, do do their own staging, but, uh, but most of them actually bring in a stager. So I actually hold a couple of different staging certifications, and that is my... Um, you know, my personal interest, I love to stage. I've been, you know, doing this with my own home for years. So it's just a natural, you know, combination of me selling real estate and staging. So a, lo a lot of agents will bring in a, a, a stager. Um, you can certainly request that. Um, if your agent doesn't do that themselves, you certainly request to have one brought in because it makes, it does make a world of difference to have um, somebody that has been professionally trained uh, in paint colors and uh, furniture placement helping you with that. And if you brought in um, a stager, how much would they cost? Well, that can really vary. Um, a lot of times um, you can, you know, you can ask your agent, you know, to pick up that if they did not offer that, but that, you know, um, it, I, I always say it wouldn't hurt to ask. Um, I think it would vary depending on what you wanted them to do, if they were just arranging your stuff or if they were bringing in stuff. Um, so, you know, as I said, I, I do carry my, I do have stock enough to stage a few homes with uh, accessories. But um, yeah, I, I think that that's, not a lot of agents do that, but that is one of my specialties. And I, I like to try to be full service with my clients. That's why you're a purse strings approved provider. <laughs> yeah. We appreciate that about all our providers. Um, uh, do you bring in helpers when you do the indoor and outdoor um, uh, staging, or do you do most of it yourself? Um, you mean um, would, um, outdoor spaces, or what were you meaning? Um, yeah, like do, do you use. Uh, Suggest different people to help with the lawn and painting and things oh, like that. 
Oh, yes. And, and and that goes with all of the contractors and service people that are needed. I have a long list of different providers that I give out to my clients, painters, electricians, plumbers. That's part of my service, too, is pairing my clients with what they need. Um, so definitely assist with that process and have, you know, a long list of painters and different um the, the range of uh, service providers that are needed when it's time to sell a house. Definitely. That sounds great. Mm -hmm. Connie, that was amazing. I picked mm -hmm. up so many tips. It sounds like for the most part, less is more. Would you agree in your house? I de definitely. Yeah. And, and sometimes that is hard, and, but it really is. Less is more. Um, yeah. It will photograph better and cleaner and neater um, when, when there's less. Yeah, and you mentioned some of my favorite stores. I love Target. <laughs> I yeah. love Home Goods. Um, but you know, we can get carried away in some of those knickknacks, and I mm -hmm. think that's where we get more, and we need to be have mm -hmm. less. So, um, but they do offer great like organizational things. Um, you know, I, I watch some of the shows like uh, Love It or List It and things like that, yeah. and it's amazing when you walk into someone's house. There's just a lot of stuff in there. There really is. There really yeah. is. So it is a good opportunity for cleaning and purging um, when it's time to sell your home. And that's why you said a lot of times afterwards, people are done. They're like, wow, I wish I would have done this 10 years ago. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I yeah. I love had, Go ahead. We had another question come through. And oh. what might be some forgivable non-improvements like garage floors, basement improvements? What do you think are some things you could get away with? With getting away with, with not doing? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, definitely. They're not going to take pictures of your garage, but you know, if you can have it looking organized, there's really, you know, the key to it. Um, the more that, you know, you can have things neatly put on shelves and like it's go through this cleaning and purging, um, you know, process we've been talking about, certainly not necessary to, you know, gut your bathrooms or your kitchen uh, when you're going to sell, you know, but if you can, like I said, you can make some minor um, improvements that really don't cost a lot. If you're talking about paint and that sort of thing, light fixtures that will really go a long way. So there are a lot of things you, you can do that. Um, I don't know if that answered, if there was any more specific to that that I could address. No, that seemed, that seemed to be great. I, okay. I'm wondering, what did the woman say when you painted over her mural? Oh, she was totally fine with it. You know what? I, I feel like I have a very, um, I, you know, I, I appreciate that people have different tastes than I do. And the last thing that I want to do is go in and, you know, be bossy or tell someone to do or hurt someone's feelings. But I just look at it through the lens of a buyer mm -hmm. and what they're looking for and what is going to get them the most money for their house. Yeah. And so generally, if I tell people, the mural is just not everyone's taste. It's going to present better. If that, it, I mean, it's it's no offense, and I never want to be offensive to anybody's right. taste or anything like that. But I am truly trying to help them get the, their house ready to go in the market, so we can get the most money for them. Right. Excellent point. Yeah. I mean, you know, as you well know, with buying or selling your house is a very emotional experience, especially if you've mm -hmm. lived there, raised your children there, things like that. But like you say, it's almost like you have to reframe it as think about somebody else stepping into this arena mm -hmm. and making it their own, not not yours, but their own. So um, mm -hmm. I think with that that perspective in mind to really get your best price is um, a great way to approach it. I do. And I'm very sensitive, you know, to, to all of that. I understand that my taste or what I suggest isn't everybody. So I'm very gentle in how yeah. I somehow communicate some of those things. I like to think of myself um, lately as a, a boutique broker. I think you've probably heard that term where I'm very, I'm very handholding throughout the entire process and very involved. So I, my, my whole goal is to make things as easy and stress-free as possible in the process and uh, have a, you know, a real working relationship with my clients. So that's my goal is to make it stress-free and uh, quick, quick, easy, and stress-free. Perfect. Perfect. Mm -hmm. That's great. Any more questions? May I come in? 
I think that's it right now. Um, Connie co covered a lot of these as she was going through all her different tips about the paintings and about what to take out or, you know, to pack up. So she gave a lot of these great answers um, already through her presentation, which is great. Yeah. And painting, you know, painting is can do so much for a house, it seems like. I know there are typical colors mm -hmm. people already know off the top of their head that uh, are more pleasant to the eye or to a buyer or more neutral palette. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, and, and, you know, just cleaning the place up. But I, I agree with you. I mean, you have to be ready for people to open your your cupboards and yes. your closets. Mm -hmm. And they want to know how much space is in there. And they do. You don't want, you don't want things tumbling out on them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and no, do that. I don't want any surprises. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this has been terrific, oh. Connie. Um, we're so glad that you're able to share your tips with us today. And as many know, this is all being recorded, so you can watch it later or share it with somebody. Um, mm -hmm. Max, you can tell them the next steps. Yeah, so um, we will put this under the guide section on um, this Facebook page, and it will also be on the Purse Strings YouTube page. And then tomorrow we will be presenting what we like to call a step by step. So it's going to be an overview of Connie's presentation. Um, so you can just have all the notes on one piece of paper. Next steps you might want to take as well as Connie's information um, and how to best contact her. She also has a page on the Purse Strings website, pursestrings.co. And um, Connie, if people don't live close mm -hmm. to you, how else um, can you be of service to them? Definitely. I was just thinking about that. If we don't live in the same area, I am certainly able to still assist um, clients. Uh, what I can do is I offer, I can interview agents in your area and I can find someone of the same like mind and style that uh, might be able to work with you in your area. So if you, if we live, you know, far apart across the country, I can still find someone in your area and refer you to um, I, I'm happy to do the legwork for that and try to find a match that would best, you know, meet uh, someone's personality. That's, that's awesome. great. Removing, mm -hmm. if you can find someone removing stress while moving, that's, <laughs> right. that's a real win there. So yeah. um, thank you yeah, well, again, I like, I like to. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you, Connie, okay. for um, presenting on our first Money Monday. We'll be back here next week at 1.30 Central, and we hope to see you all there. Thank you. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Thanks, Connie.